about a true sustainable urban range systems or suits approach. I am excited to know more about suits and I bet you are too. Because clean age systems can contribute to sustainable development and enhance the places and spaces where we work, live and play by balancing the different opportunities and challenges that influence the urban design and the development of community. Today, for our first episode of Climate Talks, we will discuss more about these nature-based solutions and how this can help double city in its issues on flooding, increasing urban heat and deaths, and other climate-related risks. We have been talks today to discuss more about the sustainable urban drainage system, our in-house environmental planner, and the program coordinator it is Ian Bilibel Manara. Good morning, Kelly. Good morning, Joe. Thank you for having me and thank you for selecting this topic. So for our first question, can you give us a brief situation of Davos in his fight against flooding and other climate-related hazards? Well, uh, this topic is very um, uh, an emerging issue which the, our city has long been fighting for uh, the past flooding incidents and up to now it's getting worse even with the uh, drainage improvement we can still experience different flooding incidents that happened for the past years so for example in, in, in Rojas Avenue in J.P. Laurel, in Contrero, Yangure, Montepierre, the Mosa those have been um, regularly being visited by floods, especially if there's a rainfall, uh, too much volume of runoff, uh, or, um, storm water runoff. And even in Kerong speak in, in Agdao or in our Castillo. And especially if the Davao River will be severely flooded, it will be um, flood up Situ Gravahan, um, Kerohan, and uh, the, the areas in, in, in the top. So, so Davao City is still facing uh, flooding incidents and we have also um, reviewed different articles and different um, studies, especially that the, the sea level is rising, it's continuing to rise because that is um, part of the effects of the climate change. We have been experiencing flooding incidents for the past two years, especially in, in, in SM Lana, in Damosa, and J.P. Laurel, this is in uh, Ar Castillo, in Barangay Pobalde, and even in Bagsay Sayamin. These, these areas are the, the, like, considered the downtown or the, the urban core of, uh, of Davao City, which settlements and uh, population are residing in. So, uh, still, this uh, disturbs our, 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 our lives, our lifestyle, and even the accessibility, the sanitation, and everything. Those are the impacts of floods when, uh, when we experience storms, when we experience um, animal bagyo, or even uh, tidal rise, no? pag mataas ng tides in our coastal areas, it will, it will also um, result in flooding as a, uh, we have three types of flooding. The first, uh, the first type of flood is the flash floods or fluvial floods. Meron din coastal flooding. Kung mataas ang uh, high tide or taog, no? it will also result into flooding. That's why uh, itong mga areas na ito that was once were tidal marshes before, no? in, uh, before the, the, the settlement and development, Mga tidal marshes kasi ito uh, before. That's why when kapag mataas ang tubig, the water will be going in this settlement areas. And we have um, also in Davao City kasi, it's settled in uh, vast um, wetland, large wetland networks. And you can see it here in the map. This is a 1945 map which presents us the settlements of Davao uh, during those times, so 1945, 1950s. Well, settlements in Davao. What we have here is the main downtown area, which is in San Pedro, here. And then we can see the greenery and the lush landscapes of these areas 
the Balea, syempre, those are all built. No? And then we can see here the Santa Ana port. No? So, umbaga, it has a, a division. No? It is divided by a very large Agdao Creek, no? which is a, uh, a wetlands composed of wetlands and tidal marshes. In it, you past landscape ng Davao City before we have um, uh, before we have just between mga settlements natin. And it's built up of mangrove forests, rapid swamps, and like a, a green buffer. No? Pero ngayon, wala na tayong Agdao Creek and naiwan na lang is yung uh, maliit na area, which is uh, mostly kasi na Agdao Creek is now a drainage canal, which is um, underlying the Agdao market. And Eventually, it will um, build up the road to my uh, flyover, I don't know, flyover. So, that is the, uh, the left out or the remaining um, uh, water bodies that we can see in the But before, but at the creek is, it lies free, you know, with the floodplains, with, uh, with the marshes, the environmental marshes. Those are natural environments of, of the Davao City. And we can also see here, no, kasi yung mga photos kanina, we have seen the ongoing flooding, uh, flooding cases in Agdao. This is actually Agdao now. No? So Itil Airfield is located in Kapagyo. No? Ito yung pangalan ng area before, 1940s, 1950s. It's called Itil. So, maganda yung Ipil kasi it's uh, Ipil Beach. No? Alam nyo mga, uh, mga lolo, mga lola natin yan. Those that were residing in Davao way before in the 40s, 1950s. Ipil Beach was a good beach in the Baguio area. No? So, we have also um, overlay uh, that this area of photo, which was um, taken in 19 45 to a geographical survey and then we also um, overlaid it para makita natin saan ito ang area and it happens na sa Kabagyo pala siya so that is the past environment of the Kabagyo area na has tidal marshes sa lahat so makita natin dito ang, ang water bodies so dito punta ang mga uh, kapag high tide, the water will be going here. And then kapag low tide, maiiwan dito yung mga tubig. Eh, it will build up, uh, it will support the ecosystem. Kaya may mga aquatic organisms pa rin dito. No? Like mga um, crabs and other brackish uh, organisms. So, that is why um, yung ipil, which is kapag yun yun, which is currently in Hiromi Street, is still being flooded kasi hindi pa rin kaya ng mga built canals no? kasi the, the water it runs really fast uh, in this area no? so hindi, hindi siya ma-substitute ng just a built canal but rather it, will, it needs space no? it needs the wetlands para ma-capture siya sige guys ayun that's why it's still being flooded up to now sa barangay Park Castillo and Hiromin extension because those are tidal swamps before, those are marshes before. So that's why inahala pa rin ng, ng water, nature-based solutions. Uh, there's nothing more powerful than the environment and nature. No? That's why we need to uh, design our uh, drainage systems in mimicry or in um, in basis in the, the natural and physical characteristics of the of the hydrology method. And we have um, the, the document that I've been lost no? because of uh, uh, I studied the the same uh, the wetlands before comparing the 1944 wetlands by. Um, Measuring yung mga nasa maps, no? yung mga historical maps natin, yung mga uh, historical photos. And I found out no? that in 1944, and comparing it to 2021, or in current natin situation ngayon, ang laki ng mga na-loss natin na wetlands. So it's about 90%. No? So this blue here are the 
wetland laws. Supposedly, ito yung mga wetlands natin before in Navajo City. But because of the urban development, the settlement price, and the alteration of the drainage, wala na ito. So, these are the wetlands that have been lost in Navajo City. And the remaining patches are in orange. So, ang kunti nila, it's about 24.46 hectares coming from the 471.87 hectares in 1944. So, ang laki lang. It's 90% that has been lost from 1944 to 2021 or in the current uh, situation. So, now, Kuya Lem, we have seen the changes of Dava wetlands you know, throughout the years. So, in connection to this, what really are the sustainable urban drainage systems and its characteristics and its benefits sa ating mga entities sa Dava? Yes. Uh, that's why we are promoting the sustainable urban uh, drainage systems. So this is the sustainable urban drainage system. So it's very important for this concept to be integrated in our infrastructure projects, you know, it's, uh, mga, uh, public works, in plans and programs of the, of, of the government. You know? so, um, in sustainable urban drainage systems kasi it is a biomimicry, no? it, it replicates, it follows the natural hydrology. No? Kapag when we deal kasi with floodings, when we deal with drainage, we, we need to really study the natural flow, the natural hydrology of uh, sa andalan ng water, and we need to go back to its natural forms of managing it from catchment and from storage. So, ito yung mga sustainable urban drain systems that we need to build in order for us to sustainably manage our floods. No? Yung mga floods na yung um, These are just examples. Like, for example, yung mga detention ponds. We need um, mass areas of detention ponds. Like, for example, yung Singapore, and also in, in China, um, uh, they call it the sponge cities, building sponge cities. No? So, undamming detention ponds where water will be going through instead of having it in a runoff surface that will cause um, disturbances to the settlements. So, kailangan natin yung mga large ponds, no? detention ponds, mga infiltration basins, mga even green spaces or filter strips or swales can help us in infiltration of the water. So, you can um, message people is that we need to increase our green spaces also and less built spaces in order for, for the water to infiltrate underground. And also the bioretention areas, wetlands are the most effective you know, na mga, um, examples of a sustainable urban drainage systems. It's which needs only to be preserved no? because there are natural wetlands na, no? only for excavation, only for enhancement. You just need to preserve it no? by policy measures. And also, permeable pavements. Uh, these are effective, um, low-impact development in, in construction and alternative to uh, the conventional concrete because there are void spaces and compared to the conventional concrete, um, wala siyang void spaces kaya hindi maka lusot yung water and it will lead up to the flooding runoff. No? So instead of the an alternative of it is the pervious or permeable pavements where it allows the infiltration of, uh, of the surface water down to the underlying soils. And wetlands are very, very um, and lucky in the tool when it comes to the drainage systems because uh, it is mga types of weapons. So marshes, they can help storing and infiltrating. These are the two main characteristics of wetlands that it helps the overall drainage of the city. That's why the city needs natural wetlands. Because the cities that have no wetlands. Uh, are built, no? which are canals and waterways. 
And those are not applicable here in the Philippines because the mga canals natin, well, those are wetlands before. Kasi uh, what happens is, uh, kapag may wetland, we need to have a linear construction of it, then put up cemented dikes you know, para ma-manage yung water. Pero, meron tayong problems in waste management because um, in reality, in, uh, the, the, the occupants are very, um, baga, they just throw everything in, in those areas and it happens that the canals are very polluted and madaming um, debris, you know, plastic debris uh, in these areas which floods those uh, canals and waterways. Kaya isa din sa mga malaking, uh, malaking uh, contribution is the, the, the plastic waste. So, the marshes and swamps, ponds and lakes, sila yung mga natural forms of drainage, which hindi na kailangan maging linear, hindi na kailangan cover. So, they really, they, they really help in addressing the floods. And we have abundant marshes, swamps, ponds, lakes here in Davos City. That's why we, we really recommend there are policy measures and there are prohibitions of its alteration or reclaim sa kanila para hindi maubos yung mga wetlands natin in, in our city. And the wetlands, when we documented and measured the, measured the capacity, the mga storage capacity ng wetlands, we have compared it with the there are mga remaining uh, fragments. For example, ito na sa photo. Uh, it's in Lanu. So this is actually the largest wetland that we have seen here in, in Lanu City, one of the deepest. So when we calculated the remaining patches or remaining fragments na uh, existing pa yung wetland, um, it actually has the volume of 74,000 cubic meters. So, kaya nyo mag-collect or kaya nyo store at 74,000 cubic meters, which is um, can be compared to 30 Olympic size swimming pools. So, ganun ang, ang tulong niya sa ating drainage. No? So, we, we, we need to think it in this way. So, kung wala nyo yung wetlands, where will this 74,000 cubic meters to go to, no? saan sila punta sa ating public drainage, no? which is, it will really cause the, uh, the, yeah, the flooding and magkakaroon ng runoff, and etc. So, ang um, laki ng tulong na. And it's just, and one consideration here is that when we uh, measure the dry season, no? so, paano na lang kung wet season siya, mas malaki pa yung story na, mas malaki pa yung water volume na napunta sa wetlands instead ng sa ating mga um, bright public images. So this, that, this is the characteristic of the sustainable urban drainage system. So it, uh, hindi din kailangan ng malaking wetlands. But in this case, no, just for example, a parking space, you can already build a um, trench. No, yung mga infiltration trenches natin uh, or bias rails to this kind of design. Basically, Hindi na natin kailangan, um, hindi natin kailangan ipave or i-concrete uh, lahat ng atin space. No? So the water will be flowing from here to, uh, to from, from rain and then it, it goes here at this space. No? So yung mga tubig na pumunta dito, syempre naka uh, may, may kunting elevation siya. No? So, uh, we need to form it na ito yung pagiging catchment niya. Yeah. So, the storm water here in these areas, instead it will go as a runoff, meron siyang mga um, storage no? kung saan kung pa dito ang water, instead na it will go directly to our public drainage and we make yung mga culverts, yung maraming yung mga uh, waste debris. No? So, it, this is how these Sustainable urban drainage systems helps them. It's more of the design of the, um, the, the spaces also and also the, 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 the infrastructure and the establishment. So, rainwater harvesting is also part of sustainable urban drainage systems. So, hindi siya lahat ng 
needs ecosystems, you know, even in, in a very built establishments, uh, rainwater is part of the sustainable urban drainage. So if we have, we are catching rain, you know, uh, harvest time, uh, most of the establishments are are harvesting and catching rain. Malaking tulong yun na mamanage natin yung water. Instead, na lahat ng tubig from the rain will be going out to uh, its runoff, you know, to the surfaces natin, which is to punta lahat sa atin. Uh, so there is a, somehow a delay of, of the, the, the storm water and it can be used, it can be utilized. So we're now treating the, the, the water or the rainwater, we're treating it instead of a disaster, we're treating it as a resource. So that's we need to think of no? because sustainability is the So that's how smart cities think. No? For the permeable pavement, meron din, no? Meron din tayong infiltration that will happen. So, parang green building, no? The entire green building should have a rainwater, harvesting facility, tapos yung parking spaces niya is permeable. So, so that it can help, no? In the overall drainage improvement and System. So, konti na lang, kapag may green building tayo, yung contribution na sa, sa ating public drainage will be increased. And it has a very least contribution to our public drainages. And then, we also have the, the types of permeable pavements na uh, this is being currently practiced in our city. Yes, so for example, yung concrete pavement dumpouts, Single size aggregates, no? just simply hindi ganun ka mahal ang ganito ng mga uh, materials. There are these pavers, permeable pavers, no? this is the most common permeable pavement design, and also permeable concrete. So, Kuya Lem, as we have mentioned, ang importance ng ating schools, no? So, is there an establishment in the city that practices this kind of approach? Well, what we have um, currently, because this is not yet um, the mainstream um, practice, but still we recognize this uh, kind of practices. But when we survey the you know, city, there are many public establishments that are doing this. Like, for example, in Amiya Residences, in Cafe Lagoon, this is also one of our Luna Awards, you know, which has been developed by the Kisa Group. So, ang ginawa nila, we have an existing wetland and then the wetland was enhanced. No? So, yung mga establishments at this surrounding this uh, so-called lagoon or so-called catchment must, uh, must enhance pa nila yung kanilang drainage because it also acts as their rainwater catchment. No? So, yung catchment coming from this establishment, this is a restaurant, dito uh, punta sa kanilang Good. So we have stored uh, a, a very good wetland area and then we also use it as for fishing. You know? So my fishing activities, my recreational activities in the um, area. So this is a, a very good practice. And also another one is in Lawadato Sea Park. This is an example of a um, detention pond you know? because in rainy season it acts as a uh, catchment. So, so that's funny, but uh, actually the, the purpose of it is really uh, but it's not a, a permanent pond because when it's in dry season, the, the water will infiltrate underground and it acts as a uh, a green space na naman kapag dry siya. So, and one of my uh, favorite uh, designs actually is in Chula Long Park, Centenary Park in Bangkok, Thailand where they, uh, they designed a park for uh, Chula Long Park University. So this is being used by students, by professors. Um, you know what I mean? Because they have this uh, inclined uh, Design 
na nandito yung catchment ng water. So this is the uh, wetland areas. No? Tapos yung uh, the water that will be flowed here will be uh, catched in this area. No? So medyo pagaling yung continuation niya. So naging, nagkaroon na ng wetland dito. And then what happens is that may mga retention ponds and then my outdoor classroom, may mga constructed wetlands. Ginagawa na parang outdoor classroom. So that is how they have designed it. It's very well because the area in Thailand, uh, uh, ito city kasi, is actually being severely flooded in the area. So that's why one of the um, decisions they have is to make it as a green space that can function both recreation both a learning space and at the same time can catch and also address the flooding. So it is a sustainable urban learning system design. It's a low impact design and it's a nature based solution design. It's very interesting no, ang students approach na to. And now I know na akin po dahi ang students sa Laudato City because I thought before na di baka ang dilang school and it's so amazing kapag dry season makasyot kami dito. So it's very interesting to learn. So thank you so much. So Suits, um, costly but is an intervention, and is it difficult to implement? Uh, I think um, it's not that costly, but uh, it needs only a prioritization in terms of the programs and plans because in nature-based solutions, is, uh, it's it's not really on the high-end materials. The independent or sophisticated technology. It's just simply following the natural systems. Uh, and then when we when we compare it to uh, different infrastructure projects, we can see that the conventional materials because basically uh, it is with nature-based solutions because in that area of suits and sustainable urban drainage systems. It's more on um, it's more on exploring the alternative design in which it is more biased in its natural hydrology. So kapag, for example, the wetlands, wetlands are there already. Um, we, we just need to preserve it. But the more man-made wetlands, uh, those wetlands that are really impending uh, uh, catchment siya. Kailangan lang siya ng content enhancement. Like for example, sa Amelia, uh, it, it is a weapon before. So may content enhancement, content excavation, and then content, um, it needs uh, 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 just geotextile sheet para mas, mas, um, uh, mas mataas pa yung depth ng water so that they can continue their fishing activities. But still, may sustainable urban drainage systems can be DIY. Uh, do it yourself. Especially when we're referring to rainwater catchment. So, I cannot say na uh, it is really, it needs a high cost before you can practice it. Because yung bahay natin, we can do it in our households actually. We just need to catch the rainwater. It's, it doesn't need the sophisticated materials and facilities. We just need uh, a conveyance, a connection pipes to our gutters, and then we need a basin. No? We need a basin or we need a uh, tank. And it can just roughly, nasa, nasa 6,000 to 7,000, we can already build a DIY rainwater facility. So, in that way, that was another thing, you suits kasi can be practice if you will just leave out green spaces in your in your establishment. For example, a household or a building, kapag may inalang ka na green spaces in your area, that's already a sustainable urban system. And then, my good thing, excavation, it has the design, of catching it, it is already a sustainable urban system. So, iba, the landscaping, may mga trees, sa ilalim ng trees, instead of, of uh, constructing a plant box of it, ang ginawa is, walang plant box, pero dito punta ang water, so that the water can help the, the 
the, the tree or the plant of the learning. So, you know, that is more of the design rather than the materials, rather than the, the, the cost. And also, the resourcefulness, but uh, Resourceful as you have mentioned, the better DIY approach. So, what are your calls to actions to our city of um, government of Dakao and also the concerned stakeholders? Yes, um, well, it goes with the infrastructure projects. Ito yung pinakakailangan natin dito. And mainly, you know, yung maraming arguments din ang relocation that is really needed. No? Yung mga settlements kasi natin are really at risk. Uh, marami tayong settlements in Rojas, um, areas. But this is really needed because it, um, it, it risks their, their lives, their mobility, yung kanilang settlements doon because we don't want the typhoon Haiyan na kumuha to happen again. Those are a coastal settlement. And by mga plans na sana yung for relocation. Pero na ako sa plans na. So we really need to look for because yung sea level natin is rising. That is a fact. A fact talaga yun because it has been recorded as compared to the past years. Naroon talaga yung increase of our sea level. And it's not only in Davao City but it's the entire world that's happening. Now, when I live in Bangkok, because in, uh, I love Bangkok and Jakarta, they are really known as sinking cities already. You know, we don't want to happen that in Davao City. That's why we really need to centralize, decongest the population areas, because um, this is a risk. And, uh, and, and if my relocation will happen, especially in these areas, now, once we're tidal marshes, because actually this is areas here and the coastal areas are older than state. No? So kapag, ma, uh, kapag may spaces na tayo doon, we need to uh, we need to put back the wetlands or balik ka din wetlands and the coastal road project has the opportunity to to restore the wetlands kasi may mga gaps kasi na nangyayari doon sa I mean, spatial gaps station gaps from the coastal road going to the coastline na yung mga gaps na yun. So we need to mass rehabilitate those wetlands, mass reforestation of the mangroves. But it's not yung mga mangrove swamps. Which ones were the original natural ecosystems of those areas, especially in Isla Verde, going to the Bolivar. Those are the vast mangrove swamps before. So kapag Tapos na ang coastal road, oh, but hindi, hindi necessary tapos na. We need to actually plant now yung mga mangroves. So we are calling the, both, um, both the uh, regional and also the local government to start uh, restoring the mangrove um, swamps, the mangrove forests of the coastal road now because we are in fighting against a climate crisis. We, we need everything as a region. And we also call for the sustainable urban drainage systems to be integrated in all the plans, policies, programs of, of the government. Especially in nature-based solutions, um, and integrate just sa ating drainage master plan. So we need to look at the drainage master plan natin may mga detention ponds, natural catchment systems, and hindi lang lahat drainage improvement, um, adding up the canals no, or building dikes because um, kulang yan, that will be insufficient. Uh, yung hydrology kasi natin, ang batter ng ating natural hydrology is not all canals and waterways. Meron din dapat mga basins because yun yung natlans. But when I'm at lunch, the mountains, they just act like the creeks. They are just all for conveyance. They just transport the water. They do not catch it, but they do not store it. And they, they can infiltrate it on their lines uh, in our uh, water table. So, what is the capacity? That's why we need the wetlands in the drainage systems. Ayan. So thank you so much, Yang Tinerval, for answering my questions and for gracing us your time. So now that we have fully understood what suits are, I hope this will give an inspiration to everyone to practice this kind of approach for the betterment of our city. So this has been Joanna Dilin, your host for the Climbing Talks.
and see you in the next